Hello everybody, how you guys doing? Uh, this is gonna be a more off-the-cuff video. Uh, no script here to see. I know that you guys enjoy when I do these videos every so often, so I guess here I am with another one. Though this one, uh, there's a reason, I guess, why I'm doing this video, and that is because I, I have received a few comments on some of my latest videos now that I have been talking about the cosmology of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I've been getting some, some people asking me, of course, questions about how it all works, how it all connects. Uh, but more pertinent than what this video is really about is uh, I have been getting some comments of people saying that what I'm saying in these videos, what I'm talking about, uh, sort of directly conflicts with some of the stuff that they have seen, not just from maybe some of my previous videos that I have done uh, way, way in the past, or uh, stuff that they have read from 3rd edition and 4th edition, uh, and maybe even 5th edition. So but basically people are a little bit confused as to what's going on, and uh, I, I figured that it would be wise for me to just make a video just kind of explaining how the cosmology works and, and why there might be some discrepancies between what you might be reading and uh, some of what I might be saying. Uh, before that, we do have a sponsor for today. The sponsor for today's video is Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? That means that, statistically speaking, in some form, it may happen to you. I am not even 35 yet, and I think I'm starting to see it. I am literally about to become a statistic for male pattern baldness. Man, this sucks. The thing is, with hair loss, prevention is key. If you already have advanced hair loss, then, well, you're already too late. But if you're just developing that hair loss, Keeps may help you stop it. Keeps treatments take between four to six months for you to see the results, so it is important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you will save. What's cool, though, is that you used to have to go to the doctor's office for these prescriptions, but not with Keeps. You can see a doctor online and have the product delivered right at your door. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months, so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps also offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there, so the prices are also better than what you might be used to. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Mr. Rex or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That is keeps.com slash Mr. Rex. Now, back to the video. So now let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons. So things can get a little bit confusing because there are parts of Dungeons and Dragons that is essentially shared between all players. You and I, or those, of course, from the actual Dungeons and Dragons team. And then there is stuff that is, uh, I guess, not shared between all of us. So what does that mean? My world, if I were to create a, a planet with its own country, its own rules for magic, I could even make it with entirely different physics than what you would be accustomed to. If I create a world, that world also needs to exist alongside the world that you create that may have an entirely different set of rules for magic or physics. And then there's, of course, the, the worlds created by the Dungeons and Dragons group. The, 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 obviously the worlds that you know as Forgotten Realms, Everon, Mistara, you know, what have you. Now, the way that they solve this conundrum of how can, <laughs> how can it make sense for us to all have these worlds just sort of exist within the same multiverse, uh, that was the creation of the idea of the prime material world. And this idea primarily came from the Spelljammer campaign setting. So this campaign setting essentially set out to create a reason, but also a way for all of these planets, all these worlds to coexist with one another. And it kind of solved the problem, the question of what happens if I just go out into space? What happens if I teleport right into the moon? What happens if I create a spaceship and just, just get out there? Right? And this is something that players could always do. I mean, there is no restriction as to how high you can fly with the spell fly, right? Theoretically, you could just cast fly on yourself and go as high as you can and presumably even enter space. So the, the, the answering that question was, was a valid take, something that needed to happen. But it also, on that very same campaign setting, it sort of explored the idea of how far you could go into space. Could you theoretically then access other planets and how are those other planets presented? And that's where the concept of having 
every single world that you and I create and Dungeons and Dragons creates exists within this universe. Every single plane is enveloped in a crystal shell that then floats in the phlogiston, which is this river. So all of these marbles with worlds inside float together in this prime material realm. Now this makes sense because what I create is different from what you create, but somehow it all needed to exist within the same sort of world, right? The, the real problem, however, lies in the fact that now you have to deal with issues like the inner planes and the hells and the heavens. And why is this an issue? It is an issue because these concepts are not different between my world and your world. It almost doesn't matter what kind of world you create. Theoretically speaking, there is always a hell, right? Like everyone kind of understands that there are these defaults that we all have to default to if we expect to play Dungeons and Dragons. Now, of course, your world can have very specific rules that kind of just overwrite those defaults. Like, for example, the Ethereal Realm. The Ethereal Realm is supposed to exist within Dungeons and Dragons, right? It, it's kind of necessary. That's where ghosts are. If you don't have an Ethereal Realm, having ghosts it can, becomes a lot more difficult, or basically you have to change them. Um, but also there are spells like Etherealness, which is a spell that exists within the basic framework of the game. Everyone gets access to that spell regardless of how your world is built, unless you specifically eliminate it, which presumably you would do so with a reason, which is fine. The Dark Sun campaign setting, for example, has a reason. They're ethereal, I don't think they have a border ethereal. And they explain it through various sort of like, you know, very specific reasons why that's the case, which I, I guess I don't have to get into. But the idea is there are these things that are defaulted. We all have these rules that we play our games and our games are based out of, and that's the D&D rule set. These rules basically have an understanding that there is a hell, that there is a heaven, uh, that presumably there might even be a limbo, that there's an ethereal, an astral plane, an inner plane, like all these things matter because a lot of the spells in the game rely on these factors, right? Like it can be a little bit tricky to imagine um, a world where spirits of the dead don't go anywhere or whether uh, you can try and cast a, a fire elemental conjuring spell but you don't really know where that fire elemental is coming from like these things need a, a reason and that's where all these defaults kind of come in and so we needed a uh, a, a a setting basically to explain this something that really got in deep as to where these creatures are coming from what these outer planes are uh, where are they and what are they? Uh, how, how big are they? Like all these questions, whatever questions you might have, we needed something that would answer them and that's where Planescape came into play. Planescape explained everything. And it was so great because we basically had a book for every single location in in the outer planes and inner planes. So like when it comes to the ethereal realm, when it comes to the astral plane, when it comes to the nine hails, um, you know, Mount Celestia, like we had books and books and books basically just explaining absolutely everything. And so this became the default D&D &D cosmology model. It, it basically worked in everything from all of the different uh, realities in the prime material realm to every single other campaign setting. It, it all made sure that it was sort of congruent with itself. In fact, we even talked about this on my last video where I talked about the Deep Ethereal. We mentioned that uh, you guys remember Ravenloft in second edition, I believe even third edition too. Ravenloft was said in the Deep Ethereal. And on the actual campaign setting booklet, it, it very specifically mentioned this. Uh, so all of these different campaign settings basically used Planescape as a way to sort of explain where they were located within the great cosmology of Dungeons and & Dragons. And, um, and then even other things like alignment. The concept of alignment is very much kind of just involved with the great wheel cosmology model, which is the Planescape cosmology model. The idea that on the top left you have lawful good, then on the top you have neutral good, then on the top right you have chaotic good, and so on and so forth, right? This this notion that if you if I were to draw a square and ask you to basically fill in where each of the alignments would go, like you you kind of know where they go, right? Evil goes down, good goes up. Like this notion 
uh, was kind of just based also on this sort of great wheel cosmology model. And uh, much of the uh, much of the gods from the Forgotten Realms were also basically designed with this idea in mind. So the way that I'm creating these videos, everything that I'm talking about on my videos is designed with this particular cosmology in mind, which we call the Planescape campaign setting. Now, where are these uh, confusions, I suppose, coming from? Well, as the editions kind of just kept on going, right? we're primarily talking about second edition, which is where when Planescape actually came out. In third edition, things got a little bit weird because uh, we didn't really talk about Planescape at all. In third edition, we had a book called the Manual of the Planes, which basically cemented the Great Wheel cosmology model, the Planescape model, as the default. Like it was very specific about it being like, this is what we use. All of D&D is sort of based on this. Um, however, and then they basically went on to describe how you could create, like a lot of the book was about describing how you could create your own cosmology. Um, so it was a little bit just, you know, not necessarily, they didn't really set out to fully explain Planescape, but basically to just give you these summaries of everything that Planescape was about. Um, and because they did that, I guess, seemingly, they didn't feel the need to make more books that related to the Outer Planes or the Inner Planes. So basically, when it comes to the planes in 3rd edition, you, you really only have that book. Now, the book is really good because it explains everything, but it's, it's really a summary of everything. Um, a summary of what was Planescape. But then came the Forgotten Realms, which is obviously what I focus on on this channel. I, I'd like to talk about the Forgotten Realms the most because that's where all the video games are. Uh, that's where uh, all of the 5th edition adventures are basically set and uh, a lot of the novels are also set in the Forgotten Realms. So it, it just makes the most sense for me to focus on it and that's why I do it. Um, but specifically, the Forgotten Realms campaign setting in 3rd edition attempted to change the cosmology. They had their own cosmology model, which I believe is called the Great uh, no, it's called the World Tree Cosmology. They decided uh, that they created it for third edition, uh, basically to just like be a little bit more specific about where each god was was located. Um, they didn't need to, and I don't really know why the reason was of why they did that, but they did. Um, then fourth edition came, and with it came uh, a couple of very radical changes to the story of Dungeons and Dragons, where. Um, you had events like the Spell Plague, which essentially meant that, uh, I guess to describe a little bit of it, basically the Goddess of Magic was killed, and a lot of these radical changes ended up happening within the cosmology of the Forgotten Realms, where entire realms were destroyed, gods were killed, even the world itself started to crack and shift, and magic started to work different. It was, it was kind of just like a lore way to describe a lot of the radical changes that they wanted to make, not just to D&D, but specifically to the Forgotten Realms. And, and they used that lore bit to basically explain that, and with that, they created a, a very radical change to the cosmology. And that's where the uh, world axis cosmology came from. Um, I, here's a picture of it if you want to see it, basically. I, I know that a lot of you are probably uh, well aware of this picture. You can see it in the Dungeon Master's Guide of 5th edition. But basically, they wanted to create this and have this be the new cosmology model. Uh, but then in 5th edition, once again, they just kind of retconned a lot of that stuff. Um, basically, they decided that uh, after the events of the Spell Plague during the Second Great Sundering, uh, things were kind of just put back to normal. <laughs> and uh, since then, we haven't really been given much of an indication as to how exactly things are supposed to be. But instead, what we got was more of a, um, of a non-answer, I suppose. What we were told now is that it doesn't really matter. The, the way that you see the cosmology is um, that I guess all of these different cosmological models are based on how humans and elves, how they tend to themselves see the universe. And it really is more about scholars trying to understand it rather than how things actually are. I guess the idea being that the cosmology itself, the way gods work, the way locations are designed within this framework, it's maybe like a little bit too complicated for humans to truly understand. And so humans try and make up 
little graphs and, and circles and, and give it names to, to attempt to understand it when in reality they can't. Um, and that's basically the way that it is approached now. However, this is where we go back to the Planescape slash Great Wheel Cosmology model. Now that we are in 5th edition, we're essentially going back to the Great Wheel, the original cosmology model, the way that I have been, uh, I guess, describing it in my videos. If you look at the player's handbook and you were to go basically all the way to the back of the book, at the very end when they talk about cosmology, you will realize that they're actually using the Great Wheel cosmology model. It sort of became the default of fifth edition at that point when it was the only model that they added for the player's handbook. And then if you go into the Dungeon Master's Guide, you will see that when they explain all of the different cosmologies, they do very emphatically say that the Great Wheel is the default. So we're basically sort of going back to how things used to be. And this is why things can be very complicated because for a lot of people, including me at first when I was doing all of this research, uh, I kept on finding all of this just very conflicting information. That's because if you were to go back and read specifically Forgotten Realms stuff in the um, in third edition, like you would find that the information is just wildly just I guess inaccurate compared to how things used to be or how things are now. Same thing with fourth edition. Like it can get very confusing because the lore will tell you different things than how things are now. And what makes it even more annoying is that obviously, like every single book that came out, like lore book that came out within those editions that talked about the outer and inner planes, those books would then use those new cosmology models, which are technically now just kind of outdated or retconned. And that's when things can get even doubly confusing. So, for example, in fourth edition, they released a book on the Shadowfell, which was something that we didn't have before. Before during the Planescape slash Great Wheel cosmology model, um, back then, we didn't even have a Shadowfell. We had the uh, the Demiplane of Shadow in the Ethereal Realm. And then eventually, as the story progressed within the, the books of D&D, specifically the Forgotten Realms, um, that Realm of Shadow, that Demiplane of Shadow, was then sort of combined with parts of the negative energy plane and was completely changed into the shadow fell and basically now that's what we have we have the the shadow fell instead of the realm of shadow the, the the realm of shadow doesn't really the demi plane of shadow rather doesn't really exist anymore and uh this is a change that occurred and so in fourth edition when they released this book on the shadow fell they're basically using the cosmology model that was at the time, the valid one, which was the uh, the world axis. And so if you were to read that book, for example, and I did a video on this, on the Shadowfell, you would probably see that like things can get really confusing <laughs> because they're talking about things that maybe don't exist anymore or they omit things that exist now. Uh, a good example of this is, again, going back to uh, another topic that I talked about on my Deep Ethereal video, which was Ravenloft. Um, Ravenloft is supposed to exist, the campaign setting that is, is supposed to exist within the Deep Ethereal. But during the great, uh, I'm sorry, the World Access model, which is the model they used in 4th edition, the Deep Ethereal didn't exist. <laughs> and even in 3rd edition, actually, many people don't know this, but in the, um, if you go back and read the Manual of the Planes in 3rd edition, uh, the Deep Ethereal was like an optional thing. It wasn't the default that it existed. Instead, you had to, it was like an optional little sidebar that you could read and you could add this to your game if you really wanted to, but it wasn't the default. And so um, when you go back and read that book, the Shadowfell book in first edition, like basically they have the entirety of the, sh they explain that they have the domains of dread from Ravenloft. Um, I believe they do in Shadowfell instead of it being on the deep ethereal. Uh, so now that they're releasing the campaign setting for Ravenloft, like, I wonder what they're going to do because, uh, I guess I'm just really curious because that should answer a lot of questions. But again, just going back to this is why there is a lot of confusion. So to kind of just go back, I guess, to the original point, I don't want to ramble too much. Um, the, the reason why I'm using the Great Wheel cosmology model, which is the Planescape model, is really twofold. One is because it is the default D&D model, which means that whatever I talk about 
on these videos now that I'm going to be talking about the, the planar realities. Uh, these planar realities, this framework applies to every world. It, it doesn't matter if you're playing the Forgotten Realms or everyone or if you're creating your own world. This theoretically applies to you as well. It's supposed to. Um, it is the, the default D&D &D cosmology, so it applies to everybody. Uh, so even if they were to release like something very specific for the Forgotten Realms that maybe talks a little bit more about the world access model, you know, that would be only specific for the Forgotten Realms and not to the overall world of Dungeons and Dragons. And that's reason one. Once again, to summarize, it is just a default D&D model. But reason two, we also have way more information about the uh, the Planescape model than we do for any other model. Any other model. So the world tree uh, was basically only active for a single edition and only for, for the Forgotten Realms. And then once again, in fourth edition, when we had the world axis, that was only available for a single edition. And no further books were really released as to how to explore this particular cosmology. So we actually don't know anything about, for example, how the elemental chaos actually works within that cosmology. Whereas for the Planescape slash Great Wheel, we have a, lit a literal myriad of books that explains absolutely everything. We have an entire book on the ethereal realm. We have an entire book on the astral. That's the reason why I managed to make two videos on the ethereal is because we just had so much info and that's fantastic. So those are my two reasons of why I'm doing Planescape, uh, why I'm doing the Great Wheel. I hope that makes sense. I, I hope that answers a lot of questions and uh, I hope that that also kind of just like elucidates a little bit on like why things are the way they are. Um, it all really comes down to basically like retcons and changes that, especially changes that never needed to be done. But whatever, that's I guess beside the point. I hope you guys at least found this conversation interesting. If so, leave a like, leave a comment. Actually, I, I, I am very interested because I'm not perfect, obviously. A lot of this is off the cuff. Um, if I made a mistake, uh, there's a correction you might want to make if I said something is wrong. Obviously, leave it in the comments um, so that I can I can read it uh, specifically. You know, because uh, some of this very specific kind of cosmologies, like when they started and the reasons of why they started, um, they're a little bit confusing. A lot of this is very confusing. So, uh, if you guys want to correct me on something, make sure to just leave it in the comments. But yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being awesome. You guys are the best. Make sure to check out the, uh, the sponsor, Keeps. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.